Hey guys, it's Davey here from FoamWolf.com and in this video we're doing a review on the new ice cream sandwich update on the Samsung Galaxy S2. In this case, it's on the Sprint Epic 4G Touch. Um, we'll go ahead and show you, you know, the general update that you would get with any Galaxy S2 and then some of the Sprint specific features, but let's go ahead and go into the settings so we can see that I am running on Android 4.04. If you tap on this guy, you do get that little uh, Easter egg, press and hold on it and you get a whole bunch of little ice cream sandwich Android, so pretty fun, but let's go ahead and talk about the features. First thing you'll notice is the lock screen. So I'll go ahead and lock the screen. When you unlock it, you have your typical background or wallpaper, uh, but now when you unlock, you actually have this little lock right here. You can drag it in any direction, so you don't have to drag you know, the picture off the screen like you would before. You can drag it in any direction and it unlocks like that, so pretty cool to see that. Um, it's kind of like it is on the new Galaxy S3 or the new TouchWiz. So it's nice to see that Samsung, you know, included that feature. If I unlock it, um, what I actually could also do is get the weather to show up on the lock screen. So I'll go ahead and go to the display settings really quick. I'm just going to check weather and I let it get my GPS location. So I'll lock it again. And you can see now it's showing the weather. So another cool feature um, makes it a little bit more handy to have your weather right there instead of having to unlock it. You know, a lot of us, you know, use the widget up here. I don't have mine up right now, but typically I do. And it makes it easier to have it around the lock screen. So that's nice. Um, next thing I want to talk about is the notification bar. First thing you'll notice is the 4G icon's a little bit different. Let me go ahead and turn off Wi-Fi really quick and turn on 4G. Um, You'll notice that it's basically like the 3G icon. You basically get the up and down arrows for upload and download. Um, honestly, I don't really prefer this one because the old one actually gave you, you know, the signal strength that you had for 4G. Now you just get the download and upload, but really isn't that big of a deal for me. Um, another thing that you'll notice on the notification bar is the battery percentage. I'm not sure if my camcorder will be able to catch that, but anyway, you can see the little white text right over here. That's the battery percentage. It says 86%. And uh, again, this is something that you could actually turn off in the settings if you don't want it. So this battery percentage icon, kind of similar to what it is on the Galaxy S3 and actually you enable and disable it the same way by uh, checking and unchecking this guy. So you see it's there, not there, and there again. So anyway, that is that. Um, you don't have the option to go into your settings from here, which is kind of disappointing because I did like having that, you know, quick shortcut right here because instead of, you know, I, I'd rather do that than having to hit menu and then settings. I know it's really the same thing. I mean, it's two button presses, but I don't know. I just got kind of used to that. So anyway, that's one thing that I like. Um, let's talk about the launcher. So I'll go ahead and open up the app launcher and it looks pretty much the same as it did before. But the main difference now is you can actually go to Sprint ID. So this is for the Sprint uh, variant, the Epic 4G Touch specifically. You can go over to what's called My ID. It's already preloaded. I didn't download it or anything. And boom, you have the stock ICS launcher, which is Definitely something that, you know, I like to have. I mean, just having the choice is nice. Um, I actually prefer this launcher, maybe because I'm so used to my Galaxy Nexus, but I know some of you guys like TouchWiz more. It doesn't really matter. I mean, it doesn't hurt to have the choice. If you want to go back, you just tap on the Samsung ID, and boom, you have your uh, regular TouchWiz launcher. So that's definitely a cool feature. Uh, multitasking, you press and hold home, and, you know, you get the typical ICS multitasking. If you wanted to close your apps out, just slide them over to the left like that. You can see I had the, an option for task manager. It moves up to the middle when you have no apps. You know, I could tap on this and I could see no applications. I could look at my RAM, clear the memory, whatever uh, I would do before. Um, let's see, another thing is a screenshot. So before you take a screenshot, you know, pressing the uh, power button and the home button at the same time, and it still works, but now you can actually do the regular ICS way, which is hold the volume down and then power. So you actually have two methods to take a screenshot. Not really a big deal, I mean, if you're used to the home method, but uh, sometimes, you know, if you're pressing and holding the home button and it brings up the uh, applications, it could get confused with that. So it's a little bit easier to do with the volume down. I actually prefer using the volume down, but anyway, that's not that big of a deal. Um, another thing is the uh, swipe keyboard. So I'll go ahead and load up the uh, keyboard really quick. Let's go ahead and load up a, uh, we'll load up the calendar really quick and make a calendar event. So anyway, you can see the swipe keyboard looks a little bit different. Basically just the newer version of it works pretty well. Obviously, you know, an improvement over the older one, so it's definitely going to be better. Um, another thing is the settings. So let's go ahead and go over to the settings. So first thing you'll notice is actually when I press the menu button, instead of having the little uh, short, like six shortcut squares over here at the bottom, you have this more, uh, this longer little rectangular box. And um, it just looks a little bit cleaner, and that's the general theme with ICS. And uh, if I tap into settings, you can see I have these wireless toggles right here for quick and easy access. 
honestly, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, on the Galaxy Nexus, it's a great thing because, you know, you have your setting shortcut. It's really easy to get to. But on a phone with TouchWiz, all these shortcuts are available up here. So really no need to have it over here. Of course, you have your data usage, which, you know, I, I'm using a lot of data on this phone. But this one's nice to be able to, uh, you know, control your data. But if you're on Sprint, you have to Sprint, you know, Epic 4G Touch. You don't really even need it. That's why I set the, uh, the limit so high because it kept on bugging me as far as uh, the warning. So I took that thing off. So anyway, that is that. The settings are new and refreshed like it is on Ice Camera. I'll go ahead and show you really quick that it does have face unlock. So you could use, you know, this guy's front facing camera. It's under uh, security, of course. So I tap security and go to screen lock. You could also set there, set it to be uh, no screen lock by hitting none, which is, I don't know. I mean, some people like it. That way, every time you press the power button, it takes you straight into uh, what you want to get into. Anyways, let's go ahead and go to security and screen lock. You can see face lock. I can set it up right now as I normally would. Um, I'm not even going to do it. I'll just show you guys that it does work. Anyway, close out of there. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, overall, you know, the update has been really good. I mean, if you, have, if you don't have the Galaxy or if you have the Galaxy S2, more than likely you already got this update. Um, mainly this video is probably for those of you guys who haven't got it and are considering buying this guy, especially right now that I know a lot of the uh, carriers are lowering the price on it and, um, it's a really good deal because it's a really great phone. I mean, great camera, great front facing camera, great screen with a super AMOLED, not the highest resolution, obviously, but, um, definitely something I like anyway, so far, you know, I have to give it a thumbs up for the update. No major hiccups, no glitches. Um, only glitch I kind of noticed a little bit was, uh, when I pressed the home button, sometimes the, uh, see how the background's like grayed out? Sometimes the bottom bar doesn't get grayed out. It, it just like these little icons like show up bright and it kind of looks weird. But other than that, um, so far so good. Um, everything's working good. It's nice to be able to have Google Chrome working on here. Um, but yeah, this is you know seven minute video just talking about an update. Uh, hopefully it helps you guys out. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to visit phonebuff.com for all your latest cell phone news, reviews, and how-tos. Thank you.